Hey Rebecca, are you actually gonna zip line with us? I think so. It's scary. It is scary, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. If you do the whole zip thing one time, it's not scary after that. It's not. Thanks. That's how I was. I was scared the first time, and then I wasn't scared the second time. These were valiant men and lived up to their name, Mighty Men. We're a little rusty at camping. Yeah. It's been what, two years? Yeah. And then we only go once a year. <laughs> Well, we you're, maybe camp. You're not a camper. Yeah. I always want to go, but we have also, also always have young children. I'm always afraid they're going to fall on fires. You know, camping season in this family is maybe coming upon us. I know. I'm excited about that, actually. You, you, you like, like camping? camping? I like camping. No, I don't. I like well, it. Well, she sure. likes road camping. I don't want to Her papa camping. sets it all up, right? Okay. Hey, well, that's okay. I don't want to go you know, it inspired okay. me to take my boys. You know, let's go out in the woods. Let's talk about what it means to be a man. Let's go have adventures. You know, it's not that I don't like camping. I like backpacking camping. It's not that you don't want to do all the work. And then, if we roadside camping, guess who does, does most of the work? I, I guess I should be okay with food. that. I cook the food. I know, I know, true that. What? Me? I see that. Come on. But you know what? I need to be okay with that. I mean, that's the theme of this weekend. This weekend, as much for me as it is for them. It's about being a servant. So if that means roadside camping and me doing most of the work, it's okay. This year it means let's go zip lining. Let's uh, shoot some BB guns. <laughs> okay, right here, it's all the fishing poles. I think we need to get one pole that everybody, <laughs> mom keeps going. She keeps going down the line. Going cheaper and cheaper. $12. We're not really fishermen in this house. We're more, Farmers. I wonder if we should get more one of these. They're like more of a simple. Oh wait, maybe down here. Let's get the keyboard. Maybe the kids section is what we want. Yes, these are probably built to be more abused. What do you think? Yeah, we need to get something like that. I want this. Ten bucks. Extremely tough. That's what we're looking for. I'm not sure that that's really going to be extremely tough, but whatever. Okay. We'll do it. Let's do adventurous things. But let's also talk about what it means to be a man. We're getting paracord. We're gonna build our own tent out of a tarp and paracord and our own wooden stakes. Here it is. Boom. It all started with reading 2 Samuel. It captivated me when I read about King David, but not so much King David as his what they call his mighty men. It was just very impressive. One thing these mighty men did is they heard that King David was thirsty. And oh, he longed for this well behind, it actually happened to be behind the enemy lines. He just longed to taste that water. Well, before you know it, three of what, he, of what the book calls mighty men snuck into that camp, into their enemies, grabbed that water, and took it back to King David. Now, King David much appreciated this, but was humbled by this and was like, I can't even drink this water you gave me. You risk your blood. And he poured it out. He poured the water out as a sacrifice to God and he couldn't take of it because of what those men had risked. But I thought, man, these were some men. Looky there, boys. Um, I wanna and girls. Gross. Lily, are you gonna do that? Yeah, I'm gonna go on to Mom's I'm heart gonna do it. Hey guys, carry this. This is gonna be an adventurous thing. Like nobody's listening to me. Everybody's looking up there. Josiah. What? This is an adventurous and fun thing, but it's also our chance to look around and see how we can serve these ladies and other the other men. My mom, my and people all around. Oh, that's hot. Awesome. What does it mean to be a man? Uh, help other people? Wow, well, that was quick. What does it mean to be a man? Help people work hard, make money. Who's a good man that you know of? Papa. Oh, come on. Who can you think of that's a good man? You. Thanks. What makes a good man? Um, I'm working hard. 
and serving people and... So working hard is a big deal to you guys, huh? Oh. You've picked that up, but that's what it means to be a man? Maybe. We'll take it. When can we go zip lining? I think any minute. We just have to wait here a second. We're still four and minutes early. Our instructor's coming what? to get us. See that one on the left, Rebecca? Yeah. Blue shade cloth? Yeah. That's as high as it gets. Okay. You think you can do that? I think I can. You're just gonna put it on your head, buckle it under your chin, then pull the little chin strap, get nice and snug. Yes. We're all going with you, honey. We should maybe tighten you up a little bit. Your right foot's gonna go in the red loop, and your left foot's gonna go in the blue loop. Really? Miss Brown, are you scared? Uh-uh. No? Uh-uh. <laughs> are you scared of anything? I'm scared. Uh -uh. What are you scared of? Yeah, it's Come on, you've done this before. I know, but uh, I'm just not sure. You're not so sure? Are you going to back out? No. Okay. Wait, you're going to back out? No, I'm not. Only Gideon does. He says he's not backing out. Gideon has said that? Yeah. Are you backing out? Uh-uh. <laughs> Look how cute. Okay, pull it down. You're doing good. He's a determined kid. There you go. Push it yeah. through. Wow. Good job. That's good. The mighty men willing to sacrifice themselves, risk their lives and blood for somebody else, for their leader. There we go. Yeah, remember, hold on below that pink, okay? I'm really nervous, actually. I don't know, should I go now or should you go? Oh. I'll the one behind him has the most work, so I'll go behind him. He jumped right off, Gideon. Hey, how was it, Mom? You doing all right? You can do it. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. He just goes at this like it's nothing. Are you nervous? Okay, you're scared? Okay, here, okay, you don't have to go to mom. Go to mom and then you can quit. Okay? okay. You just do this one and then you can stop. You can do it one more time, okay? You gotta go one more time. You want me to get out there and help you? Walk out there, I'm gonna go with you, okay? Okay, I got you. Stand right there, okay? Now look at mama. Okay, walk out to mama. There you go. You did it. I'm proud of that boy. He was very scared. This is the tall one. Are you all done? Uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> Are you gonna be scared this time? Uh, okay, wait until mom says, you ready mom? Walk to her, there you go. <laughs> Wait, you ready to go down? Uh -huh. Wow, you're braver this time. Go to mama, look at mama. Here comes mom. Did you pretty have good. fun? You got pretty scared at the... Oh, so yeah, I had fun. fun. I started freaking out for a minute. <laughs> what if one of this is not all right, or the cable? <laughs> I'm like, you gotta not think about that. <laughs> so, so uh, no you didn't. Is it as bad as you thought? That one is. <laughs> Hey Josiah, Lily's jam. Can you help her? There you go. Thanks, buddy. Get in, come on. Papa, hand me his thing. There you go. That's the zip lining. It's over. It looked like you had the most fun. Mm -hmm. You've got the reddest face and the sweatiest hair. Did Jonah, 
Did Jonah have the most fun? He did. He was, and he helped somebody that needed help. He went oh. behind them and helped this girl. I helped Gideon. That, that needed it. And Josiah was helping Gideon, and I helped Lily, and you helped Gideon. So we all learned a lesson in helping other people. I'm worn out, and they're climbing logs. He is the bravest boy. He's four. He was so brave. He did things I didn't do. And then I thought, wouldn't it be great if my boys could turn out like these mighty men, just willing to be such servants that they would give up their own blood for it. Okay, mighty men. We're home from town. Let's load the van. Jonah, will you go take care of the pigs? Yeah. And we will load the van, Josiah and I. Here's the thing, guys. We have to set up a tent, tarp tent, by the way, that I've never done before, before dark. And we need to make our own wood stakes, too. It's 10 till 5. We only have about, get dark about 7.30 now. Here, Two and a half hours. In. Okay. Put those pillows. You're going, Laurel. You're going to go with them. You want to go sleep up at the lake with Big Papa? Can you get Laurel off our mattresses? The mattresses, please. It's so heavy. Push her off. I yeah. Okay, we have it packed. Well, what's more to these mighty men? Well, there's other stories. I mean, David had these 30 mighty men in his closest ranks around him, but then he had three. And one named Benaiah, it was noted that he ripped a lion with his bare hands in half on a snowy day. Not just a <laughs> not just a clear day, a snowy day. These were men. Well. We arrived. It's our neighbors. You don't have to go very far, but why would you go very far if this is your neighbor? Now, where to pitch this tent? We need somewhere relatively flat, smooth, but between two trees. This would be nice. Between this tree and that tree, but it's kind of weird. It's not flat. It's not even in one direction. Look, see? Put ropes to here. Then put a okay, between these two, two trees, and then on this, tree. this may be fine, but this tree would maybe get in the way of us trying to... From here, there, from there, to there. But we, we need a rope thing. bunny holding on tank. So we could run a rope from this tree to this tree, and then our tent would be crooked, but we could still lay this way. I think it would be nice laying right here. Oh, they do not like Laurel in that lake. Hi. Hey guys, wait. Wait, there's the other end of the lake. Put it in here. Another man killed 300 of the enemy soldiers, 300 by himself. And yet one more went after a great Egyptian commander. The, the Egyptian had a spear, the mighty man had a club, and it ended with the mighty man grabbing the Egyptian spear and ending it. Another thing I find interesting about the mighty men of 2 Samuel, the Old Testament, is that in the New Testament, there seems to be a different kind of man. No. Nothing crazy obvious here. Now if you want to lay on a slope, we could do between this tree and this tree, and then you'd have a view of the lake out your, out your tent. You know, hey, wait, that's it, right there. Look, right here from this tree look, to that tree. And that's Papa. pretty flat. Look, no one will come in our house. I know, nobody it's will come in our property. house. Let me see if this is gonna work for me though. It starts curving back up that way. I think this, I think this will actually work. It's gonna be nice. All right, let's do it. I've got my, this was a good score, the Boy Scout handbook. I know they show you how to make a tent stake. How to make wooden tent pegs. A good woodsman using a sharp axe can make a wooden tent peg with six strokes. To do this, you grasp the axe, held close to the hand, six strokes to go. How do you think that is, guys? I think it's good. Okay, there's one. Okay, first chop. It's just all the way through, and you gotta do it real hard to make sure it happens. Ready? Ready? Watch out! Oh. 
right? No, not so high. Oh, back down that low. Me. That one. You guys got our tarps? Oh, look at our uh, rope that we got at Walmart. Let's find the middle, okay? Okay, get us a... Uh, middle get us right the, here. Get us the, the rope. Oh yeah, got the knot. That's gonna be so cool. I got to pin it now. Pin it? Isn't that too low? I'm trying to figure out done something wrong. I got the knot right, but it doesn't seem to be... I don't know if I'm around this tree right. What is it? We have to pull it really tight because these trees, it's just, the tarp is a little actually longer than in between these trees. Jonah, let's see if we can do it to this tree. All right, I got that in done. See, we're like going past it. What? You think you just throw a rope over that? No, you have to go straight. We could also wrap it around this tree. Here, give me the, give me the string. Or okay. give me the rope. Good. This is fun. I'm having fun. Oh, Papa. good. I'm gonna have some That's what counts. Camera. It's working. Let's see how tight it is. Yeah, it's because it's so far, so far of a stretch. And then pull this out. Is it working? Yes. So far, so good. All right, bring that corner here just side. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much more time I give this. Okay. Uh, maybe that end is. A little tougher. Okay, so far it's so good. It's just like with our electric fence. You want to put, you want to put it out at the very corner, like right here. Too fast. I didn't want to break it. All right, bring me. Get you a knife. Okay. And it's just six o'clock. One more hour of supper. I think we're gonna get done. What do you think? Yeah. There it is. You think it's gonna hold? You got it? Let's put it further down because if it rains. <laughs> That's the view. It's ready to go with sleeping bags. We're doing good, 620. Let's go have supper and then get back out here. Another thing I find interesting about the Mighty Men's story, the Old Testament Mighty Men's story is that on the other hand, there's a New Testament story of men where they tend to be more, there tends to be more turning of the cheek. You know, you get hit on one side of the cheek, you give them the other. This passiveness. We've had supper. It's dark out. Hey Brown, are you not going? <laughs> Why? What's wrong? What's wrong? What? Oh, it's scary. It's scary? Mm -hmm. Okay, you gonna stay here? I only does when you should put a TV in. If I take a TV in? Big TV. A what? Big TV. Big TV? And a real TV. Is he saying TV? I don't know. So, you and Lily are gonna be here for Princess Palace. We are. We're watching, watching a special movie? What's it? We're watching The Parent <laughs> Classic. Okay, y'all enjoy your time together. So in 2 Samuel, we saw this offensiveness versus defensiveness. And then the New Testament, you're seeing these men with a great passiveness. A, a man who is getting stoned to death for something that he believed in and having a peaceful glow on his face. Has it still got batteries? Yeah. I think it does. Okay. We've got... Hey, whoa, hey, we do not want to camp with food. I know, take that. Because that will attract bears. Yeah, that's what Go put Mom that in the said. car. Yeah. Hey, she's going to lick our pan. Take it too. I think these boys will do it. Just going to read to them. We have the survival book. I'm going to read, the, read to them some classic survival stories. And then we'll go to bed. I'm tired. I can't wait. I'm, I'm so happy to be going to bed with the sun. It's like 8.20. I'm going to be asleep, certainly by 8.45. Laurel, is that where you're going to sleep? We brought Laurel definitely for barking if a bear or a raccoon or possum or a skunk. I'm not scared of a raccoon. Any of that crazy stuff. Yeah, a raccoon can probably kill us. Probably. Hey, why does she want to go right to the pillow? I think it's softer. <laughs> Come on, Laurel. 
Oh, you're ready to go, huh? Okay, you guard us tonight, okay? Even if it means you get to lay a little, even if you have to lay a little bit on the pillow to guard us. This is the buck. I see that? I haven't seen. Okay, so it tells you how to survive, but it also tells you stories. Okay. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah. How I survived alone and is that snake that guy? bit. Holy crud, look at so that snake. So he survived alone and snake bit. He got spit by head, a snake? Head down, walking and observing the ground closely, I halt abruptly. Two feet short of the nose of an eastern diamondback rattlesnake, just as I'm about to take my next step. I take a couple of photos, noticing through the land. Good morning. We are up and at them. It's a little after seven. How'd you do, Laurel? She did pretty good. Every, every, every time I woke up, I looked up and Laurel was just laying there. <laughs> All the way up sometimes. Did she lay by you? Sometimes she laid right there. And sometimes she was laying right next to me, her feet on the pillow, her, her front feet on the pillow. And sometimes her, her head was down, or sometimes her ears were up. Uh, we have to go do our chores, eat breakfast, and then we'll come back up here. And go fishing. Fishing. That's the goal today, is to catch, catch a fish back. and start a fire. Further than you know what camping is. You don't know what camping is? No, she's... <laughs> She's like... I don't think she's ever slept outside. No. Well, she actually has. But she did good. She only barked twice, and that was at the beginning. And I, and I think she must have saw a squirrel, and she... What is it, girl? Other men getting hung to death on a cross. Others hung to death upside down on a cross. All peacefully, without a fight. So, what in the world? We've done the chores. The animals have to be fed and take care of, no matter what, if you're doing Mighty Man Camp or not. Boys have found us some worms. They say bass like live food, and that, in our case, would be worms. I think what I want to achieve now, as a man, is the great balance. We are back at camp. Somebody's splitting firewood. Come on, let's, let's fish, dude. Look, look, you can make him with all this chips. That's true, chips. but we have to make sure we're going to get our food before we need the fire, right? Okay, so what comes first, the food or the fire? Food. <laughs> okay, let's go. Get the poles, let's go. Papa! Oh, come on, get in. Papa, I'm going to love it. If I get, I get to get in that. Okay. Hey, are you going to spend the night in the tent this night? Huh? Okay. There's going to be a time for a Benaya type time to act in a, in a progressive way. But then, on the other hand, there's going to be a time to act in a, in a very passive way. Turn the cheek, shut the mouth, don't argue. If you see some fish, then let's go there because well, that's where a bass like it. Some fish. Bass. There's some fish in there. Yeah. They're brim. Oh, uh, walk away. Those kinds of things, I think that's part of what it means to be a man. Yeah, up there is where we need to throw the gun. Wait, are you sure? Look at them, see that thing? I saw some over there. Laurel's not helping our case. I know. All right, come on. Fish, Papa! Papa! Fish! Fish, Papa! Little one. It's still full right away. Fish. Fish. Laurel scares them all away. There's one right there. Right here. Where? Well. Those are young ones. Let's see. Old ones. You guys want to try to catch that big one right there? Sure. Okay, Josiah, do you know how to cast the pole? Wait, you gotta unhook it, friend. There's this blog, it's called The Art of Manliness. I think that is an amazing name because I think that's what manliness is all about. It's a total art. Can't sit out there pretty far. You got one, I need it. Unfortunately, it's not a science. There is no two plus two equals four in art, in manliness. Art, though, is beautiful. Wait, maybe you got one. Maybe you got one. Yeah. My goodness, look at that thing. Yeah, two. So where it makes up for its lack of science and preciseness is its beauty. Notice something else about art. Art is never perfect. Got him! Quick! 
Yeah, I can't. Really? Okay, that's hard. You guys know what that is, though? Is that a brim? Yeah, it's a brim. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh no, we forgot our red bucket to keep live fishing. Well, shall we run and get it as fast as you can? But we have to wait for the bucket to get here, which is sad. Unfortunately, we caught a brim, although it is a big one. I'm gonna let the boys keep it in case we don't get a bass. But there's a bass just waiting right there. Here, is that one queued up with a worm? No, it's not. Okay, where's our worms? I think maybe a bigger worm will attract the bigger fish. And it's perceived differently by everyone. So the definition of manliness is gonna change from person to person. You got a lake water in there? Yeah. Okay. Look out! Okay. Here! Hey, back off. Woo! Oh good. Oh, yeah. Just clipped his mouth. Didn't swallow it. I there we go. Okay. Keep him fresh. You see them all right there? Throw it in there where we can see it. There you go, perfect. Now there you go, you're gonna catch this one. Just give it a second. Ah, oh, they're so close, look. We don't wanna catch that little one though. No, girl. You want me to reel it in? I'll reel it in for you. For some reason those bass don't like that. Well, let's try a fake bait on this one. Jonah, if the little one's gonna get it, just pull it out. And if manliness is an art, and art is a seeking out of perfection, but never arriving there, it means this, it means without struggle, there would be no victories. So because of the struggle, because of the strive perfection, that can actually hey, never Papa. be achieved. Hey buddy, <laughs> you're doing it. Because it can never be achieved, Papa, I, means we're gonna have consistent, continual victories if we just try. Not there, a little further out. See, there goes one. Now hold the button down, and then let go when you're, is the button all the way down? That's a bass, Josiah. About to get it. You're about to catch one, buddy. Don't do it yet. Don't pull yet. What? I, I, um, I'm teaching you how to, how to time heat. Okay. It came like an inch away. It's like it's trying to figure it out. You guys have to find a hungry one. Not hungry. Jonah's around the corner, he said he caught a fish. Look, I caught it all by myself, no help. Good job, is that your first fish to ever catch? No, I've oh, okay. caught smaller ones in our creek. Okay, cool. I mean, pretty place. Oh, that was a humongous bass, I scared it though. But the smally, the little one came up. Hold on. Hey, there's one more worm. I'm gonna go check. Hopefully this one will be a bass. Papa, I like you. I like you too, buddy. Whoa, that makes you a big. I don't think the bass are going after it. Josiah's saying he caught something. Is that your first catch of your life? No. Well, that's big enough. You want to keep that one. And then everybody would have caught one. Caught so and it's there. about lunchtime. So you all want to go figure out a fire? Yeah, and then let's cook it. Make a lunch? Okay, good I job. Papa, why might you have to carry this? I'll carry it. I can, you guys got four fish. Jonah, why don't you come get the other side of this? There you go. Jonah went to get some supplies. We're gonna try to cook this on our own. We're gonna try to start this fire without a liar, just a flint. But you gotta consult the retro I know what one do I want. I want to hold do on, that on. one. I think that we should do that one. That's that's a rock this, fireplace. Or we should do the three point fireplace. What one's that? Okay, do that. Let's make our three point fire. There's one, real nice one. This one is probably nice. Prop it up a little bit. That's a little low. Raise it up with this one. All right, give me your, give me your pan, Josiah. Let's see if this is gonna work. Let's get the moist. Put it out of there, put it down, see if it's gonna work. Okay, we need to bring it a little closer in. Okay, now we just got to balance it, it'll work. Bring a nice wad of dry leaves. Papa, they're rock hungry! 
Yeah. Let's try. All right, get a few more. And I can light it. Okay, you can. Yeah, I know how. Okay. Um, I've never started a fire with just a flint. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. We got some twigs at the ready. Here, you try this. All right, ready? Smoking, that's good. How do you try leaves? Yeah. This would be much easier. Uh, do it, you want, you want I gotta take a break. No, I know that'd be easier, but that's not always, easier is not always, certainly not always the most adventurous. Papa, ow. This that would do so good easy. if this was dry. Dry grass. Here, littler stuff. Something's smoking. There's something almost caught. Wow. I can see how you would only want to use this in an emergency. And then this would wear out you out and use up all your calories. Use this. No, stop, get, stop, get behind me, Temptation. I can't do it. No luck. That seems like okay, dry grass. Watch out. There's ants right there. Let me scoot over. You scoot on around too. Let's wide these things up a little bit. Let's do it this time, Josiah. There we go. A little amber there for a second. All right. Not giving up yet. I think this. Dry grass is the key, but maybe we need more of it. I have a different perspective this year than I did two years ago, the last time we did Mighty Man Camp, because last year we were on the road on the Great American Farm Tour, and so I thought about who were some of the great men that we met at the tour and what made them so great. Well, oh my word, that is so difficult. I could name you 50, easy. It's a camp for inner city underprivileged kids to come out. I thought that I was, you know, could do it, and well, I couldn't. This is Bill Castro from the Be Friendly Apiary. So my name is Ben Grimes, and this is Don Bricker Farms. And on this farm, we raise pasture-raised, GMO-free chicken, pork, turkey, and grass-fed lamb. No, wait a minute. I thought we were going to do squash first. This is the squash. Oh. So there was a uh, cow barn about an hour away that uh, was selling these off for 150 bucks. They're typically 400 bucks. So uh, I went and bought two of them and I had already had two more of them in there. They're perfect. Look at this. I feel like I'm with a bunch of YouTube stars. <laughs> but if I were just to name out some that maybe stick out the first ones I think of, I might say, I think the first guy I thought of was Jonathan Dodd and his sacrifice and what he's doing for others of his community. Yeah, well, we work with a few different groups. We're mainly here on Mondays and Thursdays right now. Uh, Thursdays is a day group from the JJC that needs additional supervision during What's the summer. What's the JJC? Is that it's juvenile? The, uh, Patrick J. Thomas Juvenile Justice Center. Huh. The risk he takes, the way he puts himself out there. How do they respond to it? Uh, some great, some not so great, but it's been awesome, man. These. Uh, yeah, that's really changed my heart. Listen, watching and interacting with some of these kids and, you know, come from a hard background and uh, rough experiences, but man, everyone, there's more chances in life and they have a lot of opportunities. And what you guys didn't see on camera is how well he looked after and how concerned he was for the well-being and the happiness of his wife, of his family, and then of his staff and volunteers. It was absolutely incredible. How does it and, touch uh, your heart? Uh, I don't know, man. Just seeing what to give uh, people hope. You know, I was their age once. I've made a lot of mistakes. I really messed up my life. I mean, bad. <laughs> and uh, I want to tell them that there, there's, there's more. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, Do they respond to that? Uh, some no, no. Never. So you have to <laughs> They it's say hard. it's hard. It's, it's, it's like this, you know. But after weeks, like at first, it's this, and then. Now some were coming to my house, so. Nice. Yeah. And then there was Jason from Yonder Way. He had worked on a system 
that him, him and his wife can both implement just to work through struggles that come up as a married couple. Yeah, we, I think a couple of times we've tried to just be like tough and go, hey, we're gonna go to bed mad and we realize we're, <laughs> neither of us are asleep and we're both sitting there tossing and turning. Might as well just might as well get back up and catch it and finish it. Yeah. And there was Doug. Oh my gosh, Doug and Elena. It's easiest if you grab the bottom right here and you just twist and turn like this and pull. Yeah. It comes off really easy. Kept our bus for us while we were in Alaska. We drove to the airport from their house 45 minutes. Forgot something, called them, they came, we tried to pay them, they wouldn't take the money. They were doing so much inside their own community, not just for us, but inside their community. And then, I'll never forget what he said about that tree he had planted in his yard that he was renting. We've also planted a couple of fruit trees and have a pretty good raspberry patch going. And even if we don't get a lot of the fruit from the trees, then somebody else will. And what about Michael Arsenault in Louisiana? He chores it pretty much done now we move on to projects getting the big picture of why we do what we do whether you grow food or not I think Michael nailed it 50 years from now what would you love to see your grandchildren say about their papa I'm gonna cry it's all right Fifty years from now, I'd like my grandchildren to know I really loved them and this is why I did this. Michael pinned that we do what we do, we try and do the right thing, really, why? So we can make the world a better place for not even just those right around us, but the, even the future generations. Now that's servanthood. The boys were super quick to give up. What, four strikes? Thinking about it. The lighter's right there. We have a chip man, Papa. Hey, look. Look, guys. Hold on, leaves, dry leaves. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, no, no. Set them down, set them down. Go oh, hold more, Gideon, fast. Dang. I hate to say it, but after 30 minutes, I like give up. All right, let's see. Let's see if it even works with the lighter. Stuff might be so damp. Oh, I got some dry stuff right here. Gosh, it's not even lighting with a lighter, guys. Oh, there it is. Damn it! Get in. Get in. Can you get off of my back? Uh -uh. Please. Yeah, please. Okay, I think I cut this wood. Good job. Whoa. Uh, let's keep keep a few more of these going. You happy I brought that whetstone? It's yeah. better to have a sharp knife than a dull knife. Do this for a long time. I can do that for you. Until. That Wait, Mr. Have... Brown, we have one right here. I hope they taste really good. Yeah. I, don't, I hope it's worth the work. It's not, but it's okay. Right. Oh, let's rinse these finally with our uh, water bottle. Our fire is going good underneath the cast iron. I think they decided that it was a lot of work to get a little bit of meat that we're going to release the other ones. All right, let's rinse it off in this bowl with our fresh water. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Let me get off fry it. There's no That's low it. and high. <laughs> There's no oh. low and high button. Put a little more oil in there. It's hard cooking out. Is that all we got? That's from the one. Oh. Why don't you use the pinch? 
You got a pin, you got a clean bowl for when this is done. We did it. We successfully cooked something on this uh, outdoor cooking stove. Has this one cooled off yet? Maybe. No, it's good. It's just a lot of work to get a little bit of meat. Let me try it. Come on. Look what I got. It's really not that bad. I want to last more. Hmm. I wouldn't do it just for that. Okay, what about the wild caught, guys? Uh, it's not that great. So, off from the wild caught, back to the farm food. <laughs> Beef hot dogs. Makes you appreciate wild living, and what would you do? What would you do if you didn't have a cast iron pan? And what would you do if you didn't have olive oil <laughs> to cook your meat in? And a stone for your knife and a knife. What would you do? Y'all don't want to eat any more of this poor fish? We may not have been able to start this with a flint. Hold it with two hands, but we did get it started and we were successful with the outdoor cooking arrangement. Give me two. How are the hot dogs? Good. More your speed? Huh? <laughs> hey, you gonna sleep in here tonight? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get help rained help. out here. Hey, get Laura out of here. Papa, hey, this him. is where I need to be. Papa, hey. Help Papa, help okay, him. I got it. This is where I need to be. Yeah, you guys gonna let me take a nap? Uh, if you'll let us shoot your 22. I don't think so. It's happening. The rain is coming. They're going swimming. I think we survived the rainstorm. We're still drying here. One thing I wanted to do for this movie was ask other men, particularly my dad. Just so happened that he took us out to lunch. All right, Papa's gonna take us to lunch for a belated birthday for Gideon. And I was able to ask him, you know, what, who's a good man in your life? And what made him good? Pop, when you think of a good man, who comes to mind? First person. Hi. Okay. What made him so good? You know, I can't talk about it. I choked him up the first question. He got us through the depression uh, on a little one horse farm that you are now on. Yeah. That's it. He had what he referred to as common sense. And, uh, and always was looking forward to the future, saying, one of his favorite terms was some of these days. <laughs> I, I never saw him really mad. And he always worked every day. Taught us how to work. Like I started milking the cow at eight years old. Plowing two mules at 11 years old. And uh, uh, he, he just taught us how to do things. And he really stressed that common sense to us. You know, my dad is a great grandfather. So he's on that end of the spectrum. I'm just a father. And then there's a gentleman that comes out and helps us, volunteers once a week. His name's Scott. What are you doing, Scott? Planting garlic. Is that what you thought you would do today? I never know what I'm gonna do whenever I come over. <laughs> what do you usually do? Uh, usually plant stuff or prepare gardens for future planting, or shovel mulch, or uh, move the animals around. I want to also ask him the same question. Who, who's a man in your life that is good? I would say Mark Lucas. And two, what are the characteristics that make him good? What, what makes him so good? Um, well, he's... He is a really great mentor and he's a really great uh, 
he, whenever you talk to him, he really does care about what you're saying, and he doesn't try to just talk about the next thing. So he's really good at empathizing and listening and making you feel like you're valued. And how have you been able to apply those characteristics yourself? Probably the, uh, the listening and asking uh, questions, relevant questions whenever you're having a conversation with someone and they're sharing personal stuff with you. It's um, always much nicer to, much more considerate to ask personal, or not personal questions, but uh, more uh, deep questions, I, I guess. Our last hurrah for Mighty Man Camp is actual working on the farm. I'm pointy and up about two inches deep, spaced about five inches apart. But maybe thinking more intentionally about it. I mean, we're just getting it done. We're growing food. We're growing freedom. We're knowing where our food comes from. We're being connected. Our food has a story. All those great things. But what does farm work actually teach us about being a man? Scott, why do you come out here again? Um, I come out here to absorb the wisdom of those who are older than me, who have seen more than I have seen and done more than I have done. And sometimes I get to do mainly things like herding cows. I still haven't grabbed stud muffin by the horns. I know that's, that's been a popular request, but uh, I feel like I have a little bit more sense than that. Well, one, it gives us hard work and it makes us get up and do something even if we don't want to. I mean, you really have no choice. You gotta let the chickens out or shut them up. You gotta feed the animals. Sunday, Christmas, Saturday, it doesn't matter. New Year's Eve, you're sick. It's gotta happen. If you can't do it, you gotta see to it that somebody does. It's a tremendous amount of responsibility. You also learn life and death. You also learn weeds and other things coming in and trying to take over something good. So Rebecca, our cardboard worked, huh? It did, it worked beautifully. I took, the, I took the cardboard up. We had a couple places that yeah. the, you know, the cardboard wasn't over and I weeds just towed those little weeds out. I mean, they were but very little. Just to show people, I mean, we planted this cover crop the same time we covered that garlic bed. Yeah. And look at the other side of it, all the volunteer and stuff. That animals planted. Yeah. That you also learn about how to work with everything, the big picture, how, and, and don't you see a good man trying to do that in managing others and considering how other things work together and, and cons trying to capture the big picture. Jonah, go turn my water on. Justin, are we done? No. What do we got to do next? Water that hay. There's also this act of providing this tangible providing like I put the seed in the ground I tended the weeds and I put it on my family's table that can be very satisfactory the family can see that you can see that it's very nice What we want to do is, where are our targets? Go get our targets. We're going to set them up right here on this box. I must have hit there. Okay, we got to hit the target. Maybe get a little closer. Good idea. Get in, back up, back up. All right, go ahead. Nice. Uh -uh. 29. Uh -uh. That's a lot. That's a lot. You almost got bullseye. Bullseye, 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 bullseye. Too many bullseyes. It's time, it's time to uh, camp. Are you going to be able to do it, Mr. Brown? What? You don't think so? Can you try? Can you just lay down with Josiah for a little bit? <laughs> Laurel's with us. Can you get him in there with you and see if that makes him feel better? 
Look, you can see out, you can see the moon on the on the lake. How's that? I like it, Papa. How's that? You still I don't like, like it. it? I don't like it. No, I don't I don't like it. You still don't like it, Mr. Brown? Uh -uh. You wanna try it? Uh, I just already tried it. <laughs> you did already try should it. Hey guys, he's what? Should, should we just take him back? I'm back. I want us to take you back and then the us boys will come back? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brown, you can't do it. You can't do it. Okay, kiddos, we got Mr. Brown back. You feeling a little braver tonight, Jonah? Mm-hmm. You gonna be all right? I hope. Are you gonna be cuddling up on me again? Just say it. You slept the best last night. You gonna be all right tonight? Yeah. Laurel over there beside you? Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna be the first to sleep. All right, good night, guys. Good night. I think Laurel's snoring. Well, it was end up being a funny night last night. About 3.30, we got up to pee. You guys were up too for some reason. Yeah. Did you have I, to pee? You, you were thirsty. I had to pee. Oh, I was thirsty. You boys and were I thirsty. Was, we were all thirsty and had to go to the bathroom. Well, Jonah, Jonah all of a sudden said, just saw you fly, fly, flashing a light. Were you flashing a light? No. And Jonah, Jonah said, somebody's flashing a light. And I looked out there from my tent. I could see way out there. Somebody was flashing a light, a flashlight, like moving it around. And I thought they were coming this way. And I thought, at first, oh, they're just some punk kids fishing or something. And then two, I thought, oh, maybe it's your, maybe it's your mama. Maybe she, maybe emergency has happened with a family member or herself. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, oh, worst case, it could be somebody up to no good. And there are trespassing signs everywhere. And it was like 3:30 in the morning. So what did we do after that? After what? The car no. got out of there. <laughs> no, we jumped in the car, got out of there. We didn't. We didn't take your phone or the camera. We left it all, buddy. We were getting your hatchet, off. the books, the sleeping bags, the lights, Wait, everything. We yeah, we did take the gun. <laughs> we we did take your 22 to protect us. That's we got Laurel. Happened. She was quiet. I'm thankful that Mr. Brown was not with us because he probably would have cried. Now Made a big old scene. But as soon as we turned on the light to the van, they turned off their lights. So we drove out and we I didn't saw, see them. I saw we went to the house. Yeah. I saw them like right there. When, yeah. when we were way over there, I, I, I saw a little bit of their light. Oh, you did? Just they were still shining their light even with our lights on? Just a little bit. Okay. So then we, we, we went home. On our way out, we didn't see any more of them. And we went home and just decided to stay there. That's this it, guys. Did you have a good time at Mighty Man Camp? Mm -hmm. We stay another night. Oh, that's, that's a good affirming yes. Because it kind of got ruined last night, didn't it? Yeah. What I want my boys to get out of this particular camp is that they should serve others. Now, is that going to be a sit-down lecture even like this? No. It's just going to be a, a telling them that and passing and trying to find situations where they can do that Yes. <laughs> but also praising them in a situation where I caught them doing that. Good job. Welcome. You gave up your chair. I got it warm. <laughs> That's sweet of you. I think that will be long lasting for them. And they, my hope is that we have a lot of fun at this camp. They probably won't remember anything I particularly said, but I think they will remember that, hey, we used to, once a year, go on a weekend with Pop, and it was so much fun. And that was so good, and that was right, and maybe that was the right thing for him to do. And then they begin to see that there is a way that a man can do something right, and he can also do something wrong. And that in that moment, my dad chose the right, and so I can be encouraged and charged by that, to go and make the right decisions myself as much as possible. Just a boy I want to hear you talk Counting sheep to pass the time 
found himself in a quandary, face to face with a lion. A boy in a pasture, working in the mountain air. Got more than he bargained when he came upon a bear. When the fight became impending, oh, he knew to stand his ground. He could gaze upon his history. Oh, see the victory in the ground. Every stone of his remembrance would let the record show. Just a boy with conviction is no match for a fool. Much stronger than a sling, but he knew he was mighty when that giant came on the scene. When the fight became impending, well, he knew to stand his ground. He could gaze upon his history, see the victory in. Every stone of his remembrance will let the record show. Just a boy with conviction is no match for. And just like that, it's over. Hey, what did you learn, Josiah? What did you learn? What does it mean to be a man? To give and help, not be lazy. Nice. And do what you're told. <laughs> to work hard. Don't look at me like you're guessing. <laughs> Whatever. P pull it out of your soul. What does it mean to be a good man? To do the right thing. Okay. Hey, what was that? What was the height of this weekend? What will you remember forever? About the light. Ah, yes. And the fishing. That we only caught blim and we only ate one. Aw. <laughs> well, it was a big pain in the butt to get up at 3.30 in the morning and check that out and leave, but... That's probably, that'll probably be what we remember. And you'll, you'll have a story for your kids. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, Papa, tell me the story about how y'all went camping. You had to leave at 3.30 in the morning. What was your favorite part about this weekend? Camping out in the tent. And catching what? fish and lighting a fire and eating it. Uh, and having hot dogs. What do, you think you'll, what do you think you'll remember 20 years from now? So we had to wake up at 3.30 in the morning and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a cake, doesn't it? Okay, well at least we can think about the positive. At least we have a good story, right? Yeah.